Hi, welcome to video four in the series on NVC. I'm B Marshall, founder of Yes Parenting. I'm here with Scott Swain, who is an NVC trainer. And in this video, we are going to be exploring like why it's so important to learn this way of communicating that is all about empathy. And we're also going to learn some of the incredible benefits of integrating NVC into the way we communicate. So Scott, I'm excited about everything you're going to share because when you talked to me about this before, there are just so many benefits. So I don't mind where you want to start, but um, I would love for you to share with us um, the benefits of using NVC and you know, why empathy is so important. Okay, I see two primary sort of equal, equally important benefits that for me are at the top. Number one would be an internal liberation. And number two would be increasing our ability to understand with, uh, and connect with others. There, there are plenty of others and I'll bring up a few during this video, but I'll start with those two. I'll start with the internal liberation. And that's something that will appeal, I think, to a lot of people, including the uh, people pleaser in all of us, the person who has been trained to put other people's needs ahead of our own, which to me, it's important to have internal health, to have our own health mm. so that we can give more to others. It's sort of like the airplane, you know, when you're on an airplane, they tell you, hey, even if, especially if you're a parent, when, that, when the cabin depressurizes and that bag falls, get one on yourself mm. first because if you're not alive, you can't take care of your child. Mm. So, and to me, we can expand on that. And I know with Yes Parenting, you, you emphasize that, that, that the parents' needs are very important mm -hmm. and maybe even should come first so that you can be a good parent. Mm -hmm. And I, I really admire that about you sharing that. So the, the eternal liberation um, to me is – it goes way further too. And it's, you know, whether it's, whether it's a lover or a client or uh, your children, knowing what your own needs are to me is the A key or the key to being able to understand other people's needs. Mm. So I might come back to that, but I want to make sure I cover, you know, in this short video, I want to make sure I cover um, enough. So the next thing is the understanding and connection. So to me, it is so useful in our lives to be able to understand other people, unless you're a hermit living in a cave. Even if you consider somebody to be a competitor or even an enemy, I think we've all heard, understand thy enemy, know thy enemy. Mm. You know, I won't go deeply into that, but I think it's pretty obvious that if you understand another person, then you can deal with them better in whatever ways you choose to deal with them. Right. So, and can I just mentioned in there because as a parent and from a parenting perspective i think it's quite common that sometimes our child can seem like the enemy and so when you're talking about like understanding other people and in particular understanding your enemy i kind of find myself thinking in like a little kind of like a, a flash sequence of all the times when my child and i were completely disconnected and they absolutely did not want to do whatever it was that I needed us to do. And in that moment, you know, you can often experience each other as enemies. And so the beauty of MVC in understanding my child, when my child appears to be the enemy, is an incredible benefit. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you said that because that brings up the a very important third benefit and that is dealing with anger. And it's very natural for us all to feel anger, especially when you're inundated with your child's needs and they're dependent on you and you don't, you don't have an escape. You know, there's, you can't just abandon a kid, <laughs> you know, that's, and there's um, so often you will feel anger because your needs are not getting met because there are times when there is no choice but to put your needs aside and take care of them in that moment. Mm. And so anger, um, to me, MVC sort of developed a formula and a, and, a, and a way of describing how MVC can be used to help us 
not only get rid of anger or face it and integrate it and then let go of it, I'd rather say it that way than get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Um, To do that in the moment and also as we're doing that, we're programming ourselves to in the future bypass that anger. Like it doesn't even need to get to us in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I'll I'll briefly outline that. and, and, And here's the thing is like, Yay, it works for parenting, but it's going to work for everything in your life. You know, and I'll, I'll actually give an analogy that's not parenting oriented because it's a real easy one and, and concise. Let's say you are driving in traffic and, you know, there's somebody that's driving right up on your butt. You know, they're, 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 they're pushing it hard. They're, they're, they're doing some kind of thing that you consider to be dangerous. And so you get angry. You're like, hey, that other driver is doing something either dangerous or you just don't like it for some reason. And it's, it's inconvenient um, for you. You will get angry, let's say. And so what we do first, and this is a formula that with practice I think can really work. It's worked for me. First thing is to self-empathize. It's like, hey, I'm feeling anger. Why am I feeling this anger? What are my needs? I have a need for safety or consideration or respect. Okay. Mm-hmm. So once we go through that process, and we might have to say that to ourselves 10 times, 100 times. It might take weeks, whatever, but it, it might take days. Then the next step is to empathize with the other person. Okay. We can't see them necessarily. I mean, we see their car, maybe mm-hmm. whatever, but that's where we might make up a story. And it's like, Hey, that other person, you know, I've been in their shoes. I've been speeding and trying to get somewhere really fast. And maybe they're going to be fired from their job if, if they don't get there fast. And, and so what are their needs? Maybe it's a need for security for them as well. Maybe it's a need for this. That. So as we do that, it's not necessarily going to get rid of all of our anger right away. It might reduce it some, Mm -hmm. but with repetition, what I see happening is our brain, after a while, our brain starts to think, wait a minute, every time uh, this situation happens, I end up in a place of empathy or I end up in a place of peace. Why not go straight there? Why go through these in-betweens that I know I've gone through so many times. So you just get used to it. And eventually it's like, wow, you're not even being phased by somebody else doing something that really did not hurt you. It just may have before inconvenienced you or whatever. So does that make sense? Yeah, it really makes sense. And it reminds me um, of the work by Byron Katie. It's like two, it seems like two sides of the same coin. I don't know if you're familiar with the work by Byron Katie, but you know, she has these four questions where you investigate your reality. So you take a thought and you investigate that thought and it brings you around to being at complete peace because you, you know, you realize that your reality is not necessarily what your thought, your reality, what you, what you thought your reality was. And what I'm hearing you say is that when you go through this process of self empathy and then creating a story to help you have empathy for the the person with whom you're feeling angry. Um, it takes you round to that place of being at peace with whatever is your reality. And I, I love that. And, and anything, anything that brings us back to being at peace with what is our reality right now is an incredible thing. <laughs> I love it. Yes. You mentioned, I just want, because I'm aware of time, but you shared some other incredibly wonderful benefits and reasons why empathy is so important um, when we were chatting before this video. Um, you, you talked about uh, how use, uh, using MVC impacts our sense of personal power. So I'm, I'm just going to share briefly what you said and then you can just expand on them. Um, you talked about uh, making us smarter uh, you mentioned something about knowing when people are lying and oh, and you also talked about being less likely to get angry, which you've just covered. So could you expand a little bit on the relationship between using MVC um, and personal power? Uh, okay. Start with that one. Yeah. So power, I mean, here's where, and, and, and I'm trying to stick to the parenting paradigm. Um, this is where I imagine children, uh, growing up with this vocabulary and this way of 
recognizing what their needs are and having the courage to speak their needs. Um, so you imagine this a, a child growing up to be a, 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 an adult who has been practicing this their entire life. Um, and it's to me, that is one of the primary things about personal power because they're, they're going to be people who are more likely to, to know what they want and ask for it. Mm -hmm. And less likely when somebody tries to bully them, that there, there, yes, there may be some unfamiliarity depending on their socialization with the bullying, but that to me doesn't even matter. They're just going to be familiar with, wait a minute, people don't do this to each other. My parents didn't do this to me. My siblings, we don't do this. So, you know, and they're going to empathize. I imagine a bully coming up to a kid and saying, hey, uh, you need to do this or that. And then them looking at the bully and saying, wow, you really want this kind of thing, don't you? Are you, are you, uh, does it feel good to be powerful or do you want, and they're just going to be so empathetic that um, people are going to just be blown away. Uh, yeah. I see it as almost superpower. Right. I love that, that idea of it being a superpower. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about um, this uh, benefit of it making us smarter. Yeah, so uh, I really believe that any times we could find different ways of using our brains and the more challenging, the better, actually, like learning another language, for example, rewiring our brains. So with practicing of this, you know, of empathy, I think we're consciously rewiring our brains. It's like, hey, I'm going to think in a way that I'm not used to thinking, and it might be difficult at first, and that that is to model another person's insides, you know, their, their perspective. So to pause and, and, and eventually it doesn't even require a pause. It's automatic. But in the beginning when you're, but it does require a pause. Yay. That's pushing your brain to do something different and hard. And, and especially creating this other model in your head of another person and what's going on for them. Mm. I mean, what could be, what could be more powerful than that? Mm, yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely. I love the idea that, we can make ourselves smarter and grow and develop our brains through the way we interact with other people because, you know, no situation with another person is ever the same. No person is ever the same. So actually we, we have this perpetually unfolding opportunity to be getting increasingly smart for the rest of our lives if we want to. And so then finally, just, just mention your experiences around how NVC has kind of fine-tuned your radar for lying yeah and this is part theory but it seems to you know it may not be the explanation it's happened it's it's certainly happened for me my theory as to why it happened is is that we are constantly i like this word called calibrating we're constantly taking in the visual like if i'm talking to you and i am so what's happening when i'm talking to you is subconsciously my brain is analyzing my senses. So I'm noticing your eyes, your dilation, your pheromones if you're nearby, your skin tones, your tone of voice, your, the rapidity, the, the speed at which you're, you're talking. All these things, this is all information mm. that are, are constantly taking in and storing. And I'm associating it with B, and I'm associating with people in general. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, my idea is like, yay, we're doing that. We're sort of learning about people and how to interpret them. But if, if we're adding on to that, the MVC process of digging a little deeper, instead of just hearing you, oh, you had a fun trip. That's great. Let me tell you about my trip. Okay. That's a certain amount of information that gets combined with all this other information. Mm -hmm. That, But if I'm saying, oh, wow, you went on that trip. And it sounds like it was kind of exciting for you. What about that part when you're, you know, um, in the spaceship and or in the boat and the sharks were coming or the rapids or you saw the dolphins and what was that like for you and what needs did that meet of yours? So there I'm getting a more information, deeper information about you that's combining with the facial stuff that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about you, it's, it's humanity. So to a greater degree, I'm learning you better, but to a slightly lesser degree, it's still important mm -hmm. is I'm learning about all people. And so then when I meet somebody else and I'm talking to them and they're saying something 
and it doesn't jibe with my stored information about mm-hmm. people, then I'm like, oh, okay, there's some, you know, dishonesty going on here, da, da, da. So that is my, did that make sense? Mm. Yeah. Well, what I'm, let me repeat it back to you. So what I'm hearing is that humans are uh, not simply communicating through words. We're, we're understanding and taking in information through our whole range of other indicators, whether that's body language, skin tone, whether there's perspiration or pupil dilation, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So there's, there's a, a layers and layers and layers through which we're communicating that might be at odds with our words. And what I'm hearing you say is that when you use NVC, because you go a little bit deeper, it starts to become more evident that the words might be out of sync with all the other layers of communication. Is that, have I understood that correctly? Great. Wonderful. So in our fifth and final video, we are going to be finding more out finding out more about tips and techniques for using MVC and integrating it. And um, we're also within that going to explore this area of apology and why NVC moves us away from apology and um, some tips and techniques to help us integrate that ourselves. So see you in the next video.